Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is the Messiah, the Word, the Rabbi, the Teacher, the Master, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, Mediator, Creator, and Judge. He is Emmanuel. He is Yahweh, Lord, God, Savior, Christ. He is Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, welcome again. Welcome back to New Directions Apostolic Ministries. We are glad you are here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good and he is great. God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are thank you for joining us again here at New Directions Apostolic Ministries. And we, uh, we're praying for each and every one of you praying for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying for your families. Amen. We're praying for deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are talking about, are you saved today? Are you saved? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We have people all around us. Amen. That need to be asked this particular question. Are you saved? Amen. The Lord has made a way, amen, for us to, to make it out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, to make it out of this world. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He has made a way. Amen. Jesus is the way. Amen. The truth and the life. Amen. So we, that's what we're going to talk about today. Amen. So uh, right now we're going to go into prayer and then we get right into the lesson. Amen. We want to remember Sister Sharon McKenzie and um, Brother Cleon McKenzie. Um, I hope I pronounced his name right. Cleon. Amen. We want to remember Pastor and Sister Donaldson, amen, in Mississippi, amen, and their families, amen, and Brother Julius, we're praying for you, amen, Sister Tanisha White, we're praying for you and your family, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, we're praying for you, Sister Gracie and Sister Joanne, amen, we're praying for you guys, amen, that God would continue to work on your behalf, that he would continue to work in your lives and grant you the victory, hallelujah, those that need comforting, and there is comforting uh, uh, that that are in need of the comforting touch from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In your loss. Hallelujah. Only he can comfort your heart. Only he can touch and remove pain. Hallelujah. Or help you to endure the pain. Only he can do that. Hallelujah. We're reaching out to him today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That, that that he would comfort your families, so that he would strengthen them, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Let's go. Father God, we thank you for your kindness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to come before you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us through today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, you would have your way in the lives of those that are bereaved, first of all. In the name of Jesus, Sister Gaither, Lord God, in the Gaither family, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for Sister Maria Canada, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in the Espinosa family, her, her daughter-in-law and her grandkids, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the whole family, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, you would just work it out, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God, in their lives, Lord God. I lift up Sister Tanisha White, Lord God, and her family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you would just have your way in their lives, Lord God. Hallelujah. You, the rest of the names, you heard them, Lord God. They're out in the atmosphere. We spoke them into the atmosphere, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that those names be heard, Lord God, that those prayers be heard, Lord God, that those names, Lord God, each and every one. There are those that I don't know the names of. that, And we're praying for them also. Also, Lord God, who need a special touch from you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for Peace Apostolic Church, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, for Lord God, for leadership there, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Bless, Lord God, your people, Lord God, each and every place, every place, Lord God, that your name is on, Lord God, that uh, they're baptizing in the name of Jesus and, be, and people are being filled with your spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for IPC, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you will continue to add to the body, Lord God, such as should be saved. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, for all those that are on that are on live and all those who will come through replay, Lord God. You know, Lord God, 
And we realize that there is nothing that's too hard for you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, for the twin sister, Lord God, of that singer, Lord God. Hallelujah. That was that has passed on, Lord God. You know, in the name of Jesus, you know that back in Nigeria, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for her family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord God. Bless your people everywhere. Called by your name, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, Lord God. Lord, just have your way in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's get into this. Hallelujah. Are you saved? That's the big question. Ah, yes, that acts. You know, we're here in the past. That question has been asked, you know, time and time again. Are you saved? That's what really matters. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're white or black, you know, or or Indian, or whatever, you know, that doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter. Amen. Uh, uh, what matters, and, or if you're liberal or conservative, it, that doesn't matter either. What matters is, are you saved? Amen. Amen. If you're saved, you can escape the wrath that's about to be poured out on this land. Amen. On the world. Amen. Not just here in America, but a uh, around the world, God's going to pour out his wrath on all those children of disobedience. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so we, we you know, as we go on, we're going to get into this a little bit, you know, about salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us go. Romans chapter number three, verse number nine. He, he lets us know, well, then, are we Jews better off than they? Not at all. You know, so even the Jews, you know, <laughs> You, you, you being a Jew doesn't doesn't put you ahead of the game. He lets us know here. Paul lets us know here that not at all. You're not better off than the Gentiles or the Greeks or everyone else. You're not better off, right? He goes on to say, for we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, are under the control of sin and subject to its power. Amen. That's been established already in Word of God. We're all under the control of sin and its power. Amen. There's no one that's, that, that can escape what's going on in that verse, right? We are all under sin. Thank you, Jesus. What makes the difference is the ones who can answer that, are you saved question by, yes, I am saved, our sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Through water baptism in his name. Thank you, Jesus. We have been washed with the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we can say, yes, I am saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But let, let's look at this, all right? Romans chapter 3, verse number 10. As it is written and forever remains written, there is none righteous, none that meets God's standard. Not even one. All right? So that's a, across the board. None of us can boast. None of us can walk with our with our fingers under our, our own prints like we got it going on. Like we, you know, like with that proud look. None of us. Amen. Even that proud look will send you to hell. All right? So we need to make sure that we are where God wants us to be. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We can't just walk through this life thinking that we got it made and find out in the end you didn't make it. Amen. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Amen. So um, not even one is righteous. Not even one is good. Not even one meets God's standard. Amen. Not even one. Hallelujah. That's right. None of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. Amen. God's looking down on humanity, and he's saying there is none who understands, right, understands where they're really at. I mean, you know, what's really at hand here? Nobody understands. There is none who even seeks for God, you know? Yeah, it's written, you know? All have turned aside together they have become useless. There is none who does good. No, not one. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Amen. Look around. We see that, see that even more so right now in this season of time we find ourselves in now. Cursings, bitterness. I was uh, just, you know, sitting here with uh, Luca early, uh, this morning and just looking at things. And, man, it's violence is everywhere. People jumping out of their cars, going up to other cars, snatching them out the car, and beating them up and stuff like that. I'm like, it's, it's everywhere. Amen. All around the world. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. Amen. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Hallelujah. Shed blood. Amen. Innocent blood. Thank you, Jesus. Destruction and misery are in their path. Destruction and misery are in their path. Right? Everybody, you know, and, and, and you know, what we have, we can be thankful that such was some of, some of us. I mean, we were once there, you know, but God has delivered some, right? But even with that, that initial deliverance there, is, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, God has started it. He's, we're saved. We're being saved. And when he comes for the church, we will be saved. So there's in the middle there, there's that progression, right? We must progress toward all good. Amen. We can be what God is calling us to be. All right? Don't stop once you start to walk with him. Don't stop. Think that you got it made, you know? You need to continue. If you continue in me, Jesus said, then are you my disciples. So you must continue in the things of God. Amen. In the right path. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And they have not known the path of peace, right? They have not known, he says here, the path of peace. Not known. Amen. Since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God, they have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good. No, not one. He says, not even one. King James, no, not one. Here, not even one. God's counting, right? He, he don't really have to count. He knows. He's looking at things from above, and he's seeing we're all got issues. Amen. Every time I, some, well, it happens a lot. My wife and I, we'll be talking, and we'll, you know, certain in individual will come up. Not certain individual, but individuals who are, who are uh, just going through just different things and just responding to things the wrong way. And then and, then, and, and, and she'll, she'll bring it out, and I'll say, you know what? We are all broken. That's why Jesus had to come and save us. We are all broken. Amen. Broken lives, broken mentally. You know, that's going to come up in a minute. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Luca put up St. John chapter number 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who, which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Indeed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So that's the Saint Luke, Saint Matthew, I mean Saint John chapter number eight, verse number thirty-one. Thank you, Jesus. So we all needed this Savior. Amen. We all needed to be saved. Amen. There's none that can say, Oh, I didn't need it. All right. Isaiah says, Isaiah 53 and 6 says, All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of us all, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, to fall on him instead of us. Amen. When did he do that? That happened at Calvary. Everything that I was guilty of, he took on at Calvary. He took it on at Calvary. That's why individually we have to come to him. Individually, we have to have his blood appropriated to our lives because he did that, what we just read, for all of us individually. There's no, no uh, uh, group, you know, therapy, you know. Uh, 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 there was another word when I was trying to go, when, you know, when two people or friends trying to go into the military, they're, you know, they're together, they try to go there together. There's that, 
oh, that idea, oh, we can do this together. We can, you know, we can always, no, that's not the way it works in Calvary. Amen. You have to come for your own self. Amen. You have to get an account for your deeds done in your body. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so as we go on, this um, universal sinful condition stems directly from the sin of Adam. Amen. In the garden. The buddy system. Thank you, Gracie. Thank you, Luca. There is no buddy system. Amen. You have to do it for yourself. I should have left that window open. Amen. For some fresh air. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, um, yeah, James, buddy system. Amen. So this universal sinful condition stems, as he said, directly from the sin of Adam. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Adam, in the Garden of Eden, when God created him, in the beginning, there was fellowship. God and man was in fellowship. Sin entered because of disobedience, and therefore it caused a, a divide between God and his creation, mainly human beings. Amen. The rest of the stuff happened after the curse, right? After that, right? This, our land, you know, I think about this a lot. Well, sometimes, you know, we talk about eating good and eating right and all this and even, you know, and taking herbs and stuff like that. Well, if God cursed the ground, what good is the herb going to do, right? Ultimately, we need to trust Jesus for our healing, for our deliverance, for our, you know, health. Amen. He's the one who, who causes all life. He's the one who we live and move and have our very being because of Jesus. Amen. Not because of the vitamin source, and you know, you could be uh, have a clean bill of health, and then drop dead the next day. You know, I remember uh, an individual from um, when we was on church on Prairie, and the guy he was out jogging, everything was good. Every doctor said, "Oh, you're good." He's out jogging, and he, you know, gave up the ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we need to trust Jesus. Amen. All the way, He is the source. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that don't mean you're supposed to go out and eat everything that just all this craziness, you know. That doesn't mean that. I'm not saying that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about Jesus. Amen. It's about you being saved. Amen. It's about you having victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. All your faith, all your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. And everywhere we go, I've been thinking about this a lot. You know, it's like everywhere we go, you know, no, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Amen. For the one who's, who's saved, the one who has him on the inside, he never leaves you nor forsakes you. So no matter where you are, he's there. He's present. He's present with you. Hallelujah. Jesus is present to heal. He's present to deliver. He still speaks to his people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We were at, 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 at uh, lunch yesterday with a couple, and um, as we were talking, it's, it's, it's amazing. We were talking about how the Lord uh, just drops a thought in your mind throughout the week. He'll drop a thought. And the next thing you know, you're looking, you find that verse, and he's, oh. And then you start digging, and then more stuff starts coming through to you throughout the week. Hallelujah. It's amazing. God, he still speaks. He speaks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Let me move on before I get caught up. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, so death spread to all people, no one being able to stop it or escape its power. Because they all sinned. Amen. Adam in the beginning, but we all came out of Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So everyone after Adam. Adam was good in the, at first. He was good at first, right? But he, didn't, he couldn't follow one simple command. One simple command. We find that in Genesis chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. All just don't, you can eat, a, you can have everything you want. Just don't touch that tree. And the day that you touch that tree or you eat of that tree, then 
you shall perish. You will surely die. And mankind has been dying ever since. Thank you, Jesus. So all, everyone born after Adam, you see, we, uh, we saw that a couple of weeks ago, and Adam, when, even um, when he had sons, the Bible lets us know that those sons that came about, they, were, uh, they came about in the image, in the likeness of Adam, not in the image of, in likeness of God, but in the image and likeness of, of Adam. Amen. We were a couple of nights ago talking about in the lesson, uh, Romans 8, 29, it talks about how we're um, being transformed into the image of his dear son. That's the Lord Jesus. But that comes about through the new birth process. That's the beginning of it. So I, I mentioned salvation is a, a process. So as we get, once we get saved, and as we continue in him and learning of him and doing the will of God, taking that yoke upon us and learning of him, as Jesus said, right, uh, we begin to be, become more and more like him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As you submit your will for his will. Thank you, Jesus. That's what it's all about. You can, be, you can do all this other stuff. But if you don't do that, if you don't start, people who aren't, who aren't saved, who, who cannot answer that question, are you saved, with a yes, a powerful yes, and you're, you know, because, you know, there are people who actually uh, uh, think or, you know, they, they say yes, but they're not really, they're not really saved because they, they haven't followed the word of God concerning how to get saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That, that's something we, we would like to, uh, start making clear today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how far I'll get with this, but um, yes, sir. Yes, you know, we all came here messed up. We were all messed up, right? So condemnation, wrath, and the curse of death now blanket the whole world. All that is just like a heavy blanket all over the whole world, everybody in it. Thank you, Jesus. Talking human beings. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For the wages of sin is death. So your payment, what, you, what, what God owes you for what you've done is death. Your wages, your payment, you know. Everybody can know what that means, right? I done worked all week. I can't wait till I get paid on Friday night. Well, because of sin, the wages of sin, your payment is death. But the, but the free gift of God, that is, his remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 19. Now, I thought I had taken this out and put it in another place. I probably did. Now, we know that what... Ever the law of Moses says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that the excuses of every mouth may be silenced. Amen. God takes away our excuses. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. From protesting, you know, we're silenced from protesting and that all the world may be held accountable to God and subject to his judgment. Thank you, Jesus. We are all held accountable to God. Amen. And we're all subject to his judgment. Amen. I don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. I have to look out for myself. I have to make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be. Hallelujah. I can't worry about you across the street or around the corner or, you know, next day over. I can't worry about you. I have to worry about me. If I keep myself in the love of God, then I could be a blessing to you by way of teaching, you know, what God has commissioned me to do. Amen. So we all have to, as they used to say, pull up our own bootstraps. Amen. We have to, you know, I can't, I can't do it for you. You have to do it for you. Amen. Galatians 3 and 10 for all who depend on the law, seeking justification and salvation by obedience to the law and observance of rituals, are under a curse. 
for it is written, Cursed, condemned to destruction, is everyone who does not abide by the things written in the book of the law. Amen. So if you try to keep the Old Testament law, it's, you, that won't get you anywhere. Amen. It will not, it cannot save you. The law cannot save you. That's why it's, 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 it's a shame that, you know, you, you have people in, in our dispensation of grace teaching things like, uh, 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 well, you know, like certain groups, they, mix, they try to mix law and grace. Law doesn't save you. Law isn't able to save you. Law pointed out your wickedness. Law said you were wrong. You were guilty. Law says you need to be destroyed. Grace comes through Jesus Christ and, and, and extends an olive branch and gives you life if you, you know, receive it. I mean, you have to receive it. You have to take it and agree, Lord, I'm sorry. And that's that, that, that idea of repentance, which we're going to get into. That's that change of mind. Not only change of mind, but change of heart. Hallelujah. You have to change your heart about who God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And allow him to intervene in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So um, not only, so it, it says there, I'm going to start out, is everyone, well, you know, curse, is everyone who does not abide in all the things written in the book of the law, so as to practice them. It's not just uh, 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 hearing them, right? You got to practice them, right? And I, I, I mentioned that about, and you can find it on the internet, it's, it's 613 commandments, you know? And some, you know, some are, some are, some are positive and some are, some are uh, uh, negative, right? So 613, just imagine trying to keep all 613 each week of your life. Amen. By day one, you'll fail. You know? It, you, and then once failing, since the system of, of uh, you know, deliverance is no longer, you know, in place where you can take your bull or your goat and take it to the priest at the temple and he offer up the blood sacrifice for you. And, you know, since all that's done away, Jesus fulfilled all that at Calvary. Now you have to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is your only hope. He is our only hope. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 2 and 3. Among these unbelievers, we are all once lived in the passions of, uh huh. Of the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the the desires of human nature. Amen. Indulging in whatever we thought we wanted to do, we were big and bad enough to do. We did those things, right? You know, I remember when I got saved. Amen. Prior to getting saved, every year, Hallelujah. You know. Many of you know about those New Year's res resolutions that we would make. We Every year, January 1st, we're making a New Year resolution. Uh, we're usually, you know, December 20 or, you know, the 31st at the end of the month. You know, we go in, you know, we go to a party, and I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not, and we have a whole laundry list of stuff saying what we weren't going to do going into the new year. And, and I don't know about you, but myself, I found myself doing the very thing I said I wasn't going to do no more by early morning, January 1st. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, or I don't know if you've ever been, um, have, had, had to call on Earl. Amen. Hey, I don't know if many of you may not know what that term means, but you were calling Earl. That means you were bent over the the commode, amen, having drunk all sorts of stuff, right? Old English, rainy air, you know, Hennessy or whatever your thing was, and then you had too much, and you found yourself, the room is spinning, the bed is spinning, you can't go to sleep, and you find yourself in the bathroom on your knees, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance, hallelujah. Just, uh, Earl, Earl, that's calling Earl, throwing up and vomiting and all that kind of madness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is a deliverer. Hallelujah. He set me free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if drinking wasn't your thing, maybe you smoked too much. Amen. And I'm not talking about cigarettes. But that was bad too. But maybe you smoked weed too much. Hallelujah. I remember those days. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I was, I smoked more than I 
sold. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And even, it was so many things. Hallelujah. I look back over my life. Hallelujah. That was a message I was going to think about doing. I remember. Lord, I remember when I was when I was without you, when I didn't know you. I remember, Lord. I remember those times when I, I didn't know you in the parting of my sins and, and how my life was going. Hallelujah. It was upside down and you came by. And you found me. You delivered me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember. I remember, and I, I'm sure you remember also. You remember where you were when he found you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What state of mind you're in when he found you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is a wonder. Jesus is a wonder. Hallelujah. I wasn't even looking for him. Some say, I found Jesus. I found the Lord. No, you, he wasn't lost. You were lost. Hallelujah. He came and found you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, and extended life to you. Hallelujah. He's extending life right now to all who will say yes. Hallelujah. Yes to his will. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes to his way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we keep, we're forever thankful. We're to be forever thankful for what he has done. He accomplished everything for us. He did it, not us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We were by nature. Well, let me go back a little bit. Let me start beginning. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, right? Our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature. Hallelujah. Without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You were without the Holy Spirit in your life. Hallelujah. We were all there. And the impulses of the sinful mind. We were, by nature, children under the sentence of God's wrath. Hallelujah. Just like the rest of mankind. We were there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We were there. Well, I'll say I was there. You have to be honest with yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's not a buddy system. God grants repentance. We individually have to, have to respond to what he has offered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Or you won't be saved. John 8, 34. Jesus answered, I assure you, most solemnly say to you, everyone who practices sin habitually is a slave of sin. Thank you, Jesus. We were talking about this. someone I was with a couple of weeks ago. The Lord leads us. The Spirit of God leads us. Satan, on the other hand, he drives. He drives you into stuff. Hallelujah. Being a slave to sin, sinning habitually. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for deliverance. Hallelujah. Now you can say no. Hallelujah. And then you, you, the way you wage a good warfare, you arm yourself. Amen. With the proper tools. Amen. That's what we've been talking about on Tuesday nights. That being uh, 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 meditation. We started off with meditation. We, we talked about uh, 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 prayer. We talked about fasting. And the Lord says the same. This Tuesday we'll be dealing with study. And then beyond that, solitude, getting away. You got to get away from folks sometimes. Hallelujah. Get away by yourself with Jesus. Hallelujah. And, 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 and just lay out before him and allow him to minister to you. Hallelujah. Don't go asking all kind of, for all kind of stuff. You know, we don't, all the stuff we have, we don't need a lot of what we have. Pastor Dan was just saying a, few, a little while ago. If you haven't seen it in two weeks, I think it said two weeks, you don't need it. You know, you don't need it. If you haven't seen it in two weeks, you can throw it out. I told her, uh, my wife this morning, before we went to church, I told her, I said, we need to that garage. There's stuff in there we haven't seen in years. If you're done without it for years, you can do without it forever. Thank you, Jesus. What matters most is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Moving forward. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 7, 23. But I see a different law and rule of action in my members. See, there's a law, and then there's a rule of action. 
You know, the flesh wants to do what it wants to do. I mean, you can say, no, I'm not going to do that. But then Paul says, there's another law working in my mind, in my, in my members, and it's warring against the, 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 the law that's in my, in my mind, right? So let me read, it's in the verse here. But I, I see a different law and rule of action in my members of my body, in its appetites and desires, waging war against the law of my mind. So this, that, that thing that's in you is waging war against what you know to do. You know God's word makes it clear how you should live, how you should walk, right? But then there's another law that's working in you, in your old nature. This is to the saints. In your old nature that's at war, waging warfare. Hallelujah. It doesn't come in peace. Your flesh hates you. The devil your flesh, your devil in the world, that's what we're up against. Your flesh does not want to do right. Hallelujah. Your flesh does not want to walk with God. Hallelujah. In your mind, your spirit wants to obey the will of God. So here's this warfare going on right here. Right here. And he says, the law of my mind and subduing me and making me prisoner of the law of sin, which is within my members. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says in, in Colossians, we need to mortify the deeds in our members. All that stuff, all the things, you, you know, those things, whatever your thing was. I, I told you a couple of mine, you know, like like uh, uh, drinking, you know, the alcohol, uh, selling and smoking weed, uh, 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 smoking lovely. And many of y'all don't know what that's about. If you ever heard of Sherm, they take the, 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 the stuff from Sherm, the chemicals that they use, the, all that junk that they boiled up together, and then they pour that on weed. They call it, oh, it's lovely. That stuff will take your mind away. That, take, that stuff will destroy you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus and Lord, deliver me from that. Hallelujah. I have friends. I look back and I think about certain ones. Some are gone. Some have passed on already in sin. So they are, you know, you know where, right? Amen. It's either heaven or hell. If you haven't been saved and you die, you're going to hell. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God deliver me, right? But things that I see them, you know, when, you know, a lot of times you, you haven't seen a soul want, someone in a long time and, and then next thing you know, somebody passes away and you go to the funeral. Then you start seeing all these people that you used to run with. And a lot of them are, back then, were in really bad shape. Really, really, really bad shape going around in circles. They're like like on a like on a merry-go-round, just in circles, doing the same thing that I was once doing with them. The Lord delivered me. I jumped off the merry-go-round. Now I'm walking in a straight path. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Many of those guys are are are, are done, you know. And then there was one I saw, he was on a bus stop. That was when years ago I was working with IBM. I saw him on a bus stop. He was sitting on the bench talking to himself and picking stuff off of him, off, his, off himself. His mind gone. But at a state, hallelujah, <coughs> at a state where he can not respond right before God. Hallelujah. His mind's gone. Thank you, Jesus. That, that's not saying God can't restore his mind and save him, but I'm just saying. I was once with him. We were like best friends. Walking around, just just taking taking whatever we needed, just taking it. I don't care if you. I don't care. Take it. You know that's the way. That's what God saved me from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no easy way out of out of sin. Somebody had to die. Jesus died for our sins. Now you could have life through Him, in Him alone. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There was so I, so I, so, I, so I mentioned alcohol. Uh, uh, and I didn't finish. Uh, 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 weed, lovely, sherm, acid, angel dust, all that stuff. All that stuff. God delivered me from. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. That I still have my right mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Only God can do that. 
in the years that you lost in the world. Only God can restore those years back to you. Hallelujah. So many of my friends, they, they were like, they looked like oh, life had, had, had done them so wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Lord, he helps us. He turns us around. It sets us on the right path. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's our testimony. We share that with people as we minister to them. We share it with them, and they believe on the one, especially if they knew you before, if they knew you when. Only God can make that sort of change in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every year, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that no more. By, by morning, I found myself doing those very things. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what your testimony is. I don't know what it was like for you, but that's what it was like for me. You know, shooting at people and being shot at and all that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. My life was supposed to end a long time ago, but I'm still here. I'm still here in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sin touches every aspect of man's nature, mainly mental, moral, spiritual, and physical. Sin, it touches every aspect of all of our lives. Again, mental, moral, spiritual, and physical. Thank you, Jesus. We can look at that. Ephesians 4.18. For their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is clouded. Every, it's all, so much stuff going on up here, it's clouded. Their views are all, it's, it's all, they're all jacked up. They are alienated and self-banished from God, right? Or from the life of God. Self-banished. Because when you sin, you se you're separated from God. That means you're banished from him, right? Self-banished. Who no share, with no share in it, right? This is because of the willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that is deep-seated within them. Because of the hardness and insensitivity of their hearts. Hard hearts. Hard hearts. Hallelujah. Insensitivity. Joel chapter number 3, verse number 25. Luca has put up. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Hallelujah. The Lord sent these things, these, 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 uh, these caterpillars and, and locusts and, and, and canker worms. He sent them, but he lets you know, I will restore the years. I'll restore your years that was lost from the destruction that came upon your life because of the punishment that was due to you because of the lifestyle you lived. Thank you, Jesus. We all need to say, thank you, Jesus, right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Put it in the comment section. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These things, as he says, they were deep-seated. But we see here the moral understanding, right? I mentioned moral, right? Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things, right? And it is extremely sick. The King James said it's desperately wicked. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? There's some secret stuff going on in your heart. So if you haven't told anybody, you haven't, you've done some things, you haven't told anybody, just know God knows. He knows the heart. Hallelujah. The heart is, is, is wicked, is deceitful, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Verse 10, I, the Lord, Search and examine the mind. I test the heart to give to each man according to his ways, 
according to the results of his deeds. Amen. There's a there's wages. The wages of sin is death. Amen. But there is hope. You can change. Amen. We're extending the olive branch. You know. You can have life. Titus 1.15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Both their minds and their consciences, right, are corrupt. Both the mind and the, con and the conscience are corrupt, right? So we've dealt with, and we're on dealing with that, you know, those things, right? 2 Corinthians 7 and 5. For even when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were oppressed at every turn. Conflicts and disputes without, that means outside, you know, externally, fear and dread within. Those are things that, uh, you know, you're, you're, Work with your emotions. Amen. Those things that terrify you from within. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 7, 18. For I know that nothing good lives in me. Now, this is Paul writing to the church at Rome. These are saved folks. So just don't, don't think that just because you we're baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost that, Oh, you can rest on your laurels and that's it. I don't have to do no more. No, you have to keep fighting because Paul is writing to the church here and he's letting you know, for I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my flesh, my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful captivity or, or capacity, my sinful capacity. All of us have the capacity to sin. Amen. That wasn't removed from you when you got saved. Right? You have the capacity to sin. You can sin if you want. In other words, but you must have conviction. You must have a love of God. You must have a relationship with God going on. Hallelujah. A love affair of such that you don't want to hurt your God. You don't want to, you don't want to quench the spirit. You don't want to, ah, in the name of Jesus, you want that relationship to remain right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For the willingness to do good is present in me. The willingness, the will, it's, it's, it's there. But the doing of good is not there. Thank you, Jesus. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to be born again. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, these verses show us the basic need of man's salvation. The question is how to obtain that salvation. That's the question. Amen. God has a way. He's already laid out a way. Either you're going to follow his plan or you're going to be left out in the end. Thank you, Jesus. God has a plan. The scriptures are clear. Amen. I don't care what some have told you. If, you, if they told you things that were that didn't include water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance, if it, if, it, if it lacked those two things, then you're not born again. You can be, amen, if you receive this message, amen. If you, you receive the truth from the Word of God from this message, then you can be born again. Thank you, Jesus. That's the only way you're going to escape the wrath that is about to be unleashed upon this world. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You go to Jude and you talked about all the unwicked, all the unrighteousness. You know, they, they, they have unrighteous, the way they deal with people. Look at how uh, people who are doing right, how they're, how they're dealt with, you know. You do the, everything right and they want to lock you up. I heard just recently that some things that went on in, in, our, in our nation's capital, People went up just to protest, just to just to show support. Innocent people are locked up still in prison. Innocent people never done any wrong. 
Didn't break any laws while they were there. They were arrested and they're still in prison to this day. Right. Unless you, from, from at least a year and a half, haven't done no wrong. Amen. That's wrong. Amen. You On your taxes, right? You want to do the right thing, and I hope all of you saints are doing the right thing on, 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 on your taxes, right? But the system is built for, for you to lie and do all this other stuff to get ahead. Thank you, Jesus. No, you got to do the right thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The question, Jesus Christ is the answer. Not just a cliche. Jesus Christ is the answer. I remember as a, as a, uh, even before I got saved, my brother used to turn on Christian radio. You know, we would, you know, my younger brother, we would, we would, we would sit up there, we'd be high, get high, and then we, you know, you know, I'm gonna stop doing this. We'd go in the house, still living with my parents, and go in the house and and turn on Christian radio, and start listening to different ones preach. You know, there was, you know, and then. My brother, you know, it was awesome how that when God really started dealing with us and really and when we started trying to walk with him, even though we weren't saved because the church we were going to didn't offer the right plan. You have to make sure you are in a church that's offering the right plan of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. We were going to a church that, that you know, they didn't offer the right plan. So, you know, this is months later where, you know, we would, you know, be sitting on the bed or laying on the bed and just, you know, he'd be telling me stories. He told me, I guess that's why I love the Old Testament so much because my younger brother was so well versed in the Old Testament. We just sit there and read. We just read, and he had great recall. We'd just read, and then I'm hungry. He'd go in the, in the kitchen, get a loaf of bread, and then get a, you know like a, a jug of water, and we'd just be be there uh, uh, eating bread, light bread, and um, drinking water, and just going through the Word of God. That's something we learned from my mother. My mother used to sit us, she went to uh, Corinthians Baptist Church, and she used to sit us at the table, all the, the younger kids, and we would sit there, me, my brother, and my little sister, and she would be reading the Word of God to us and teaching us the Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She wasn't even saved yet, but she taught us. Hallelujah. She taught us Word of God. And then when I, when I got saved, I ministered to her, and then she got saved. She was baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Years later, but she sold into my life. Hallelujah. Word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only answer. He is the only means of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you're getting something from this. Hallelujah. Romans 7, 24. Wretched and miserable man that I am. Who will rescue me and set me free from this body of death, this corrupt mortal existence? Hallelujah. You have to call it, call it, they say call a spade a spade. If it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. You got to tell the truth, you know. Before you can be delivered, you have to, you have to tell the truth about yourself. Acknowledge that you, that, 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 that you're, you know, you're in sin, that you're a sinner. The one with the mental, you know, they got some stuff going on. In order to be helped, they got to recognize that they got a problem. If you think you do, that you're good and you don't need no help, then so be it. It's not going to go well for you in the end. Thank you, Jesus. But when we acknowledge our sin, hallelujah, when we acknowledge that we're wrong, hallelujah, hallelujah, that I actually have a problem, that I, you know, when you acknowledge it and then surrender your will for his will, John says, I must decrease as he increases. Thank you, Jesus. Talking about his cousin Jesus, and I'm talking John the Baptist, I must decrease as he increases. If you allow that process to happen, when you just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and allow him to take control of your life, surrender to, your, your, to his will, hallelujah. Receive, be at the right place. I'm talking church now, or be connected with the right people. Hallelujah. Who would take you down in the watery grave in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. For the remission of your sins. The Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Jesus. That's the only way it's going to happen. That's the only hope you have. Thank you, Jesus. But again, recognizing who, you know, who I am. Paul says here, O oh, wretched and miserable man I am, who will rescue me and set me free from the body of death? Hallelujah. And he's saying this as a saint of God. We're all wretched. We are all wretched. We all got some stuff going on that God's not happy with. Thank you, Jesus. John 10, John 10 and 9. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever. Thank you, Jesus. So you have to enter through him. He's the door. The only way into eternal life is to go through him. If you do that, you will be saved and live forever and will go in and out freely and find pasture Spiritual security. You're, that, that, that'll be yours. That'll be yours. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 45, 21. Declare and present your defense of idols. Indeed, let them consult together. Your idols, let them consult together. Whatever that be. Who announced this rise of Cyrus and his conquest long before it happened. This is the Lord. He's speaking of in this in this chapter, at the beginning of this chapter, and at the end of the last chapter, the Lord calls it calls Cyrus his shepherd and his anointed. In those two verses, the last, I think it's verse 28 of chapter 44 and verse 1 of chapter 45. He says he did this long before it happened. Long before it happened, so he called Cyrus, who was a Gentile king in the land of, 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 of Medo-Persian. Cyrus was the, one of the kings of, of the Medo-Persian Empire, which was, uh, you know, the after, well, you have the Babylonian Empire first, and then the Medo-Persian Empire came afterwards and overthrew Babylon. He let, he let you know here that, uh, that he called Cyrus. He called him to deliver the people long before it happened. Only God can do that. He knows the end from the beginning. Who declared it long ago? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God beside me. A, con uh, a, a consistently and uncompromisingly just and righteous God and a Savior. There is none except me. Thank you, Jesus. That's narrowing it down for you. There's no Savior beside the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 4 and 12. And there is salvation in no one else. There, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among people by which we must be saved. For God has provided the world no alternative for salvation. Only through Jesus. The name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. There's no salvation provided. There's no alternative. There's only Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 3.13, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed, cursed is everyone, or cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree. The cross is written. Is written. So he took on the curse of sin, the burden of sin. And before he, before, can you hear me? No. Man, they messing around again. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going. 
Thank you, Jesus. I know, I know how you told me. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 9.22. In fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, neither release from sin and its guilt, nor cancellation. Thank you, Jesus, of the merited punishment. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And, he, and I like the way they put it here, neither release from sin and its guilt, right? Nor cancellation of the merited punishment. The merited punishment was death. Hallelujah. There's no cancellation without blood. Jesus shed his blood for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus is what saved us. Hallelujah. Are you saved? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Has Jesus' blood been applied to your life at water baptism? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. John 6, 68. Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? This is the occasion Jesus came. He was in there teaching the Pharisees. And he told them, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, this shall, you won't have life. You can't have life. Then he went out, and, 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 and the Bible says that many of his disciples left and walked no more with him. Then he turned to the twelve. Will you also go away? And Simon's response, you know, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. You are the only hope. You are our only hope. Hallelujah. Jesus is our only hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse number 69, we have believed and confidently trust. And even more, we have come to know by personal observation and experience that you are the Holy One of God, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. You're, you're it, Jesus. You're it. Can you imagine being there, being there when all that's going on and then recognizing, having an understanding that Jesus is the one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But, but more so, hallelujah, we're, 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 we're blessed because we believe on what has been written. They testified. They wrote it. Inspiration, divine inspiration. All scriptures given by the uh, inspiration of God. It's God breathed. God spoke. They wrote. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We believe and confidently trust. And even more, we have come to know by personal observation and experience that you are the Holy One of God, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Don't you know what you have? Don't you know who, who you are? If you belong to Jesus, don't you know who you are? And what he has provided for you. He says, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. Thank you, Jesus. The God of the universe, the creator of the whole universe has stepped into our lives. Hallelujah. That's what happened at salvation. He comes in. Okay, Lord, here. You can have, okay, Lord, I don't know. Just surrender. Surrender your will for his will and allow him to start working in your life, working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Showing up when you got to go to court, he shows up with you. Hallelujah. When you go to got to go to the IRS, we heard a testimony a little while ago in church. For 200 some dollars, $200,000, over $200,000 was released because of prayer. Through $200,000 owed on back taxes was released, debt canceled because of prayer to the right God. Thank you, Jesus. God still answers prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I know you may be going through. Don't give up on Jesus. Just let him keep working. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh Shata. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, man or woman, may be uh, perfect, mature, perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God, he's on your side. He wants you to be victorious. Thank you, Jesus. He wants you to be victorious. Amen. It's not like that other fellow that wishes to destroy you. The Lord wants you to be victorious. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I got a, a verse of, um, five and five through eight. We see here. So the in, in here, God sent Jonah to 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 uh, to preach to the Ninevites, right? God, you know, Jonah didn't want to go. Because the people that Jonah was sent to, Jonah knew that if he preached, they would repent and God would forgive them. Jonah didn't want them to be forgiven. He wanted God's wrath to be poured out on them. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast, right? Now this is really getting serious. I want to be right. So not only did he proclaim a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest even to the, to, to the least of them, right? O, from the oldest to the youngest, all went on a fast. We talked about fasting last week. They all went on a fast. Amen. The world, well, the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him. He took off his royal robe, laid it to the side, and covered him himself with sackcloth and ashes. And he sat there, right? And he and and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. It goes on in verse 8, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way. That's like repentance, turning away from sin and from the violence that is in their hands. Amen. They were very violent people. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? says here, verse 10, and God saw their works, right? He saw their works that they turned from their evil way. They repented. And God repented. God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he didn't do it. He turned away. He See, and these are, these are enemies. This is Old Testament. These are enemies to the nation of Israel. And God still granted them favor. Enemies. Enemies. Didn't know God. Didn't have a relationship with God. Didn't follow God's word. They were wicked people. And that's why Jonah didn't want them to be uh, hear the message. But the Bible says that they, re they heard the message and they responded that by repenting, changing their their ideas, turning them away from all the wickedness that they that was in, the, on, in their hands. Matthew 3 and 2 lets us know. He says here, um, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
Thank you, Jesus. Verse number three, Matthew three and three. This is the one who was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare ye the road for the Lord. Make his highway straight, level, direct. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the divine wrath and judgment to come? See, God's judgment, his wrath has been rolling for a long time. And back in the end of the old and coming into the new, uh, Jesus stepped in in his blood. But then that's your only way out. You must be born again. You must be born from above. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So he told them, so produce fruit that is consistent with repentance, demonstrating new behavior that proves a change of heart and a conscious decision to turn away from sin. Just you saying you repent is not enough. Just your, your, your unsaved loved ones and you know friends and whatnot Saying they, they, they repent is not enough. You got to show forth fruit, right? You got you to gotta demonstrate your new behavior. And I believe King James to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Amen. That shows, hey, this, this really shows that you've changed your mind. You laid down that, that, that pistol you were carrying, right? You laid down, you know, all the knives, all the weapons that you were, you know, all the illegal stuff. I mean, there, there's stuff that, you know, um, you know, amen. But you got to lay, you got to show something that show that proves that your, your uh, change of heart, amen. A conscious decision to turn away from sin. 417. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, Live a life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life. And the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thank you, Jesus. Let me, let me go on through here. Mark 6, 7. Um, let us know. And he called the 12 disciples and began to send them out. He didn't keep them in the building. He sent them out as his special messengers, two by two. Thank you, Jesus. He sent them out two by two as special messengers and gave them authority and power over unclean spirits. Thank you, Jesus. And he told them, wherever you go into a house, stay there until you leave that town. Right. Just go to one house. Pastor, just go to one house and stay there until you leave that town. Any place that, that does not welcome you or listen to you, when you leave there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet as a testimony against them, breaking all ties and or, or, or all ties with them because they rejected my message. So when they reject what we teach and what we preach, they're not rejecting us. They're rejecting the Lord God who sent us, who commissioned us to go and speak on his behalf. Thank you, Jesus. So don't take it personal. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't take it personal. Hallelujah. So they went out and preached that every man should repent. That was his message. They should repent. That is, think differently, recognize sin, turn away from it, and live changed lives. That's it. That's the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. God's mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 24, 47. I'm coming to a close, I think. Um, and that repentance necessary for forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations. Nations here and in 
Matthew 28, 19, I believe the same, right? I can look it up quickly. Uh, it's unmerited favor. No, nations, excuse me, I got sidetracked. Um, wait, wait. Luke 24, 47. Let me slow down. 24. Because I'm making a point here. 47. Nations. This word, that's it. All right, I was right what I was thinking. So nations right here in this verse, verse 24, verse um, chapter 24, verse 47, and Matthew 28, 19, where we're to go and teach all nations, baptizing them, right? Nations here, see, we have this thing going on. We think we're, you know, it's just for certain people. No, nations right here in this verse, where we're talking about the Great Commission in both places, that word nations comes from the Greek word ethnos, where we get our word ethnicities. So the message is not just to people who look like you. The message goes to everyone, the whole world. Thank you, Jesus. All nations. All ethnicities. Thank you, Jesus. And if you got problems and, 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 and you're only going after a certain demigrant, I pray that God grant you repentance for not doing his will. If, you be, if you're out there, if he's, you know, come on. If you've been called, well, the scripture lets us know that many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But if you're called, you say you're called, and God sent you out there, you need to preach to everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be uh, uh, caught up in racism. You know. It's on racism on, 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 on both sides of the fence. I want to do the will of God. I want to please God. Amen. I'm teaching everybody. Thank you, Jesus. I'm teaching everybody. Jesus died for everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God died for the world. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Start doing it right, hallelujah. Verse 38 of Acts 2, And Peter said to them, Repent, change your old way of thinking. Turn your, from your sinful ways, accept and follow Jesus as the Messiah. And be baptized, each of you, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, because of the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. All you got to do is repent. All you got to do is repent. You can meet the uh, conditions of repentance in your home. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I've been uh, teaching about your front row. You minister to people. You don't have to be a minister to have Bible class in your house. Or in, your, or in your cousin's house. Or in your auntie's house. You can have Bible study there. You can have Bible study there with your family. You don't have to be a minister. You can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When the condition of repentance is met, God does the rest. I told you a few weeks ago, our job is to roll the stone away. If we would just roll the stone away, Jesus, will, he will raise the dead like he did Lazarus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We roll the, the stone away with the message of God. Hallelujah. Teaching the people, all people, all people from this moment forward, all people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Repent. We make, you, you meet the conditions, God does the rest. You're baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. God will fill your family with the Holy Ghost. We have to teach and preach the message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why it's so important for you to understand what God's purpose is for your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's more than what we've settled to do. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's at the door. There's all this stuff going on. There's a lot of people leaving here every moment. Hallelujah. Leaving here. Exiting out of this life. Who are not saved. The only way, they, like I said, 
Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 17, this ministry of reconciliation, all the way to verse 21, God has given that ministry to us who are baptized in his name filled with the Holy Ghost. If they don't in interact with one of us, they cannot be saved. We have the word of eternal life. We have the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us that word of reconciliation. So get up. If you haven't been doing what you're supposed to do, get up and start doing it. Start seeking the face of God through prayer and fasting. Seeking the face of God. Hallelujah. His, so he will reveal to you his will for your life. Hallelujah. Seek him. Hallelujah. Lay out before him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You must know. Therefore, God overlooked and uh, disregarded the former ages of ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to what? To repent. That is to change their old ways of thinking, to regret past sin, and to seek God's purpose for their lives. It's all about, you know, I'm not telling you nothing that's not written. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Only thing that wasn't was my testimony. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We all, God gave us all testimonies because that too we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Thank you, Jesus. So we're sharing with one another about our experience with God. It helps others to believe, to hold on, to trust. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's what it's all about. Second Peter 3 and 9, I believe this is Almost it. I think this is it. The Lord does not delay as though we were un he were unable to act. He doesn't delay because he's unable to act and is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient toward you, not willing for any to perish, that's to die without him, but for all to come to repentance. Repentance is that initial stage that one experiences before receiving the Holy Ghost, before baptism, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right? I think this is it. Luke 13 and 3, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, change your old way of thinking, turn from your sinful ways, and live changed lives, you will all likewise perish. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. That's my lesson. Are you saved? If you're not, inbox me. Amen. We went through the scriptures, what you need to do. You need to be born again. St. John 3, right? Verses 3 through 8. You need to be born again of water and the Spirit, right? You need to be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, the wiping away, doing away of all your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All is required of you, as I mentioned a few moments ago, is to repent. You can be in your house and repent, and the moment you repent and surrender, God will fill you with His Spirit. My wife received the Holy Ghost when she was living with her brother in Long Beach, long before we met. Well, well, well probably about a well, probably about a year. I'm not sure exactly now, but it was before we met. She wasn't at church. She wasn't at the altar. She was in her bedroom, surrendered to God, and God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you can be. I've, I've heard of people receiving the, the baptism on of the Holy Ghost on their lunch break at work in a hotel with Sister Fields. I know of a lady that I tarry with. Well, tarry is a, is, is a misused word. Tarry means to wait, right? We don't have, you don't have to wait anymore. They waited. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem until you be in do with power from one eye. They waited 10 days. So we don't have to wait anymore. The Holy Ghost is already here. Amen. All you need to do is repent. So I'll rephrase that. I worked with the woman on the telephone. I was living with my parents. I told you that story before. Gave her the scriptures. Went over the scriptures. With her. I said, now ask the Lord for the Holy Ghost. She began to ask the Lord for the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost fell on her in her home. 
And I heard it on the phone, the old dial-up telephones. And I heard her speaking in tongues. The Lord let me know, and then I, I, I lost it. I was running around my mom's house shouting. And came back to the phone an hour later. She was still speaking in tongues. I hung up the phone. You know, my job was to roll the stone away. Hallelujah. That's all we have to do. Thank you, Jesus. Are you saved today? Ask your, ask your, ask your, ask your people this question. Are you saved? That's all that matters. Are you saved? Have your sins been remitted? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all my time. Thanks for your time. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the word, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, again for those that are bereaved, Lord God. Those families that lost loved ones, Lord God, by natural things as well as violent things, Lord. I pray, Lord God, you will bless them in a special way. Lord, I pray, Lord God, you will comfort as only you can. Help your people, Lord God. Help us to get focused, Lord God, as uh, Pastor Holyville said this morning, help us to run it back, Lord. Run it back to the times when we really believed you, when we really trust you, when we carried our anointed oil with us and we laid hands on the sick and watched you work through us and recovered. They recovered, Lord God, where, they, where you raised the dead, Lord God, where you, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. There's nothing that's impossible for you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We pray, Lord God, you would just have your way. Help us to run it back and just start believing you like we used to, Lord. And start walking in the power and the might of the Holy Ghost like we used to, Lord. Have your way, Lord God. Bless everyone that's on the, under the sound of my voice, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. We thank we praise you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God keep you in our prayer. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Lucas, she puts this in. I need to have give her a mic and have her read this, but, you know, we thank you. We here at New Direction Apostolic Ministries, we thank you for joining us. We love you. We will continue to pray. I want you to continue to pray for us as we pray for you, right? Uh, Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything, any, cre any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's Romans 8. 38 and 39. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you all. Sister Rhonda, oh yeah, we're praying for you and your husband. I forgot. Thank you, Jesus. But God is, God, I know he's working. God's at work and I know he's working. Sister Rhonda, we, are, we love you. Amen. Pastor Donaldson, we love you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see if I can scroll back up. Sister Rose, thank you again, Sister Rose. Amen. Um, Brother Julius, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I really do thank you for your support to this ministry. Amen. Brother Alonzo, God bless you, bro. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Maria, God bless you. We love you guys. Amen. Amen. We need to get together. We really do need to get together. You know, and, and, and just get together, maybe break bread like they did. Let's do, let's try to do like they did in the early church, how they went from house to house. They went oikos to oikos, breaking bread and in fellowship. And if you live afar off, you do it in your own town with the saints that are there local with you. We need to be breaking, we need to, we need to do this. We need to be in fellowship. Amen. You who haven't been around saints in a while, you need to come around. You need to come out, come outside. Amen. Come outside. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go house from house to house. As it says. House is oikos, a Greek word meaning house. House to house. In the early church, they went from house to house, breaking bread and in fellowship. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine, all right? We have the doctrine. We just, you know, are, are, are lacking. We're lacking the fellowship, you know, the koinonia, fellowship, getting together, 
encouraging one another. Amen. Uplifting each other. Amen. Praying for each other. Thank you, Jesus. All right. God bless you. Amen. I saw Sister Tamika on too. God bless you, Tamika. Um, Sister Karen, Sister White. God bless you, Sister White. Sister Gracie. Amen. I thank God for you all. Amen. Keep, you know, you keep, as long as you keep showing up, I'll keep teaching. Amen. As God keep raising me up. Amen. He keeps doing it. I, I, I don't understand, you know. Sister Valerie, God bless you. I don't understand. He keeps raising me up. I'll keep doing it. Amen. Thank you. It seems like, you know, that's his plan. That's his program. Pro, that's his uh, policy for my life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That I continue. Amen. Whenever he says stop, that's when I stop. You know, I've been going through, but the Lord keeps helping me. Sister, Sister Jackie, God bless you. Amen. All right, so God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Sister McKenzie, I can't forget you. Sister McKenzie, God bless you. Amen. You and your husband. Amen. All right, so God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Amen. Lisa Oden. Thank you, Luca. Lisa and Sister Joanne. God bless you. Sister Lisa Oden. Brother Michael Harvey. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for you all. Again, thank you for your support. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See, Luca's my helpmate. She helps me. I be, you know, I be, I, you know, at times I miss things, you know, but she's there. Thank you, Jesus. She's there. Who? I said Gracie. Okay. All right. God bless you. Gracie, me too. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Amen. See you if the Lord says the same Tuesday night. All right. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us.